every cake has to be licked before it goes out to the floor. If you don't test it, how are you gonna know if it's good? Hey, I'm Devon, founder of Yardy World, an event and production company that's all about making tropically inspired food. Today, we're gonna to be doing a torch banana cake, which is one of my favorite recipes. Over the past five to six months during quarantine, everyone leaned in really hard to the banana bread, which I love and understand because it's a really simple, easy to go to recipe. But I think it's actually time that we treat ourselves a little bit nicer, elevate the palate, try something new. We took the banana bread concept and we made it kind of extra. Something like the banana, which is a really beautiful ingredient once you break it down to its part. You know, it's once it gets overripe, it, it gets sweeter, right? The, the sugar start to come out of it. Pair that with something like brown sugar, caramel, or you know, coconut milk. Those things really help to enhance and bring out flavors of the banana and flavors of the cake that help to take it to somewhere that maybe you didn't think that it could go. What we have here is five bananas that we're going to split in half. And depending on what size banana you get, you might want to just, you know, budget for an extra one or two. So I'm just gonna lay it down on its side on my cutting board and just go one by one. Then take the banana out of the peel. Supposedly, banana peels are also great for cleaning your teeth. I did read somewhere that if you take a banana peel like this, you can just rub them on your teeth, kind of like this. And supposedly, it's the same thing as brushing your teeth. I don't know, I read that somewhere. Do I have banana on my face now? I feel like I might. So, I'm gonna come over to my stove, just get the pan hot. This is the part where you're gonna combine the butter with your brown sugar and salt. To be honest, this is kind of like a pseudo caramel. It's not like a, a full caramel. This is like an easy alternative to just having something that kind of feels like a caramel at the bottom that isn't as many steps. Grab my butter and my brown sugar. It's already got a bit of salt in it. And I'm going to add that to my saucepan. I feel like it's actually really hard to mess this up. Really what you wanna do is just to make sure that you don't overcook anything and making sure that your placement is right. But the result is super special. You feel like you're getting something that feels a little bit more elevated than your typical banana bread. In the pan, you can hear it. It's kind of like bubbling back at me. It's getting excited just like you should be if you're making this dessert recipe. And then I'm going to add my brown sugar and my salt to that mix. Just giving it a gentle stir. The color of the butter will turn from something that's like a tawny golden color to something that's more like uh, a copper penny. It doesn't really come together all the way, but that's okay because during the baking process, it'll kind of cook in the oven and even itself out. Before I add the caramel, the pseudo caramel, I'm going to just baste the sides and the bottom of the spring forms. I'm gonna help allow for the banana to actually release from the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna take the caramel and I'm going to pour it into the bottom of the pan with the butter. I'm not gonna fuss around with spreading it around too much because it'll kind of naturally do that once I put the bananas into the pan. You wanna work from one side to the next side when it comes to bananas so that whenever there are gaps that happen, you can then just cut the banana into half or into quarters and fill in those gaps. But you wanna make sure that most of the pan is pretty much covered by banana. This actually creates a little barrier so that when you pour the batter on top of it, it'll, it'll find its own kind of routes and paths and fill in the cracks and crevices of where the banana isn't. This is the part where I'm just going to take them and have them. And this is like one of the only things I'm type A about. The banana halves have to be facing the same direction or I get really frustrated at myself for not doing it. And success, you've created your banana dance floor essentially. And so now what I'm going to do is work on the batter. For ingredients, we have all-purpose flour, almond meal, baking powder, we have white sugar. Make sure that our flours and the baking powder is sifted and you wanna do that so that you don't have any surprises that everything feels pretty even when you're baking it. So I went ahead and I sifted all that already. I find that almond meal is really cool because it adds not only nuttiness and earthiness to something that you're baking. For me, it's more so about a textural quality 
that helps add to the complexity to the of the final dish. And I'm gonna set that aside. In a large bowl, I'm going to combine all of the wet ingredients. So we have our egg and egg yolk. We have our olive oil, vanilla extract. We have coconut milk and granulated sugar. Growing up as a first generation Jamaican kid, you would find things like coconut milk and bay leaves and different spices like that in pantries. And it was pretty much a staple. And that's just because, you know, those ingredients were super prolific in the islands. It reminds me of home. It reminds me of cooking with my mom. It reminds me of my dad's restaurant. Um, and it is also just really delicious, I must say. You're not just getting fat from the olive oil uh, or the butter. You're also getting sort of like complex fat from the coconut, which adds kind of like a really nice complementary nuttiness to what's happening with the almond. Like so. I'm going to add my dry ingredients into my wet ingredients. Make sure that it all just comes together. We're gonna make sure that we take a rubber spatula and that we scrape the sides down. All of the powder that might get into the final product that will cause like lumps and clumps, you wanna make sure you just fold that back into the final batter so that it's all accounted for. And this looks pretty good. So the next part of this is just pouring this batter over the banana that we created in our springform pan. I know that licking the bowl is not a good idea, but that is like maybe sometimes like the only gratification that you get after you've like done something and making banana cakes all day. You just like really wanna like get in there. Um, but I won't do that this time, but I'm letting you know that I really want to. And so I put a little sheet tray under my spring form because you know, we're working with a liquid like butter or making a caramel. You wanna make sure that it doesn't get all over the place. I'm going to give this a little tap on the counter to release any of the air bubbles that might be trapped inside because I don't wanna necessarily like move the banana around too much. I'm just gonna give the whole uh, tray a tap. It's also good for relieving frustration. That's a whole different video conversation. We don't have to get into that right now. Preheated my oven to 350 degrees. It's gonna bake for around 35 to 45 minutes. And it goes. And now we play the waiting game. Does anyone know any jokes? So checking in on my cake, it smells amazing. The top is a really incredible golden brown color. Take a little toothpick. If you have a cake tester, you could also use a cake tester in the center. Keep in mind that you do have banana at the very bottom of the cake, so you might get a little fleck of banana and think that it's not done when actually it is. Pretty much clean, so I know that it's ready to cool on the countertop and then move on to the next step. Run an offset spatula along the edge of the pan so that when you invert the pan, it's easier for the cake itself to release. I'm just gonna pick this all up together and flip it upside down. Unlock it and lift. I'm gonna use the feeling of the springform pan bottom as my guide for if it's time to actually pop it off. And it's kind of like picking a lock a little bit. So you wanna make sure that you insert the offset spatula and you're just gonna work your way around kind of like a clock and make sure that all of the sort of edges and surfaces are not touching the pan. If a little bit does come up from the pan, it's okay, because we're just going to cover it up with sugar anyway and torch it, and everyone's gonna be really impressed that you had a torch in your kitchen anyways. Oh my God, it looks really, it looks, looks good. There's a little bit that did come up. That's okay, it's not too late. The next step could potentially be intimidating. I actually feel like it's fun. Maybe it's the pyromaniac in me, I don't know. But essentially you get to torch this cake. All you need is a little butane torch like this. Um, they also sell the bigger ones. Or if you 
don't have a torch, you could use your broiler and get a similar effect to the top of the cake. About a quarter cup of granulated sugar, and I'm going to sprinkle an even layer over the cake. And you wanna make sure it's not um, brown sugar because uh, it just doesn't caramelize the same. So you start with a super even base of sugar. So the thing that you wanna watch for when you are torching the top of a cake is that you're constantly moving the flame around so that what you get is an even coating. Do you know what? I think that this is actually not the right sugar. Oh shit. <laughs> it's not sugar. <laughs> One second. So it's really important that we acknowledge that everybody makes mistakes, first and foremost. Um, and that sometimes when you think you're using pure white granulated sugar, you're actually using monk fruit sugar, which I didn't even know was a thing until literally five minutes ago. And in full disclosure, this is not my apartment, but we have the granulated sugar, finally. And we're gonna keep on with the torching job because honestly, that's all we're really here for. This is totally salvageable. My job is to salvage things. See, this is the color I was looking for. It's gonna turn into a really gorgeous, beautiful Abraham Lincoln penny copper color on the top of the cake. As I keep the molten sugar hot, I'm going to add more on top of the cake and just push it around with my torch to spread the rest of that color that we're looking for. And actually, you know what? Because of the monk sugar, it seems like we have some marbling going on. So remember how I was talking about being extra before? This is just an addition to all that. Honestly, you know what? I wouldn't take the mistake back. It's happened, we're moving on, we're learning together. What we're gonna do next is sprinkle on the salt. It'll allow it to kind of create a, like a sticky kind of tacky layer so that the salt doesn't just go rolling off of the dessert that she just worked so hard to make. And just make sure that each section has enough. Cool. You know what? I'm not mad about it. Torched banana cake. I feel very accomplished. I've learned a lot. This looks absolutely gorgeous. Feels like a stained glass Catholic window. You want to let the actual sugar dry for long enough because it's like when you go to a restaurant and they give you creme brulee and you hit it with the back of your spoon. It's the same effect. Go in. Oh my God, it's so crusty. Obviously the coconut based, almond based phenomena, which is the batter she baked. Then we have the banana, caramel, and then the top layer, layer is the torch sugar and the malden salt as well. I'm sorry, I'm just having a very personal moment. It's very rich. Like I said, caramel, almost like butterscotch adjacent, a little salty. You get that hard crack of the torch sugar top, but also creaminess from the actual banana. Super well-rounded with the almond and coconut flavors that kind of balance each other out and play off of each other. For me, baking has always been kind of about magic. It's like you put all these things together and you wait 30 minutes, 20 minutes, and you come out with something that feels like it's totally transformed. It feels like every time you bake something, you're actually like revealing like a present to yourself. My favorite cake, torch banana cake. I think it's the future. Definitely making magic. I was like, Monk fruit? What's monk fruit?